So hello everyone, uh, welcome to the second tutorial uh, for big data. Um, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna learn how to do two things. One is how to use servers to, to, run, uh, to run the same al uh, analysis that you'd be doing on your desktop. And the second thing we're gonna do is linear regression. So the first part is optional. Like you don't need to run a server, you don't need to do any of this. Um, I'm just gonna give a little bit of motivation why you'd want to run a server. So the notes that I have, uh, if you go to the data science guide, uh, kind of has, if you go to here, it explains, um, so in the uh, how to use servers for data science, it explains why to use servers. So uh, the reason that you'd want to do that is if you're dealing with a larger set of data. So for example, on my, this is my personal computer, uh, this is just like a, um, it it's HTOP. It shows you different configurations, actually. Is that visible for everyone? Yeah. yeah. So just up here, you can see, uh, these are just my configuration. So I have four, uh, I have four CPUs. And I only have here four gigabytes of RAM. So what that means is that if your data set is two or three gigabytes, and if you're already using one or two, your computer's gonna slow down completely. And, and that's not really good because then your analysis is gonna run slowly, you can't really deal with the data and it's not very good. So instead of um, having to buy and run your own servers, there are online services that you can pay for that allow you to use servers. And they're called uh, virtual private servers. But as University of Waterloo students, um, you can go to the Computer Science Club and you can sign up there. Uh, and it's only $2 a term and you can get access to their servers. So I'm just going to connect, I'll show you guys how to do this later, but I'm just gonna connect to, um, uh, CS Club server. So you just, uh, so you can connect to it. And this is like a very powerful server. And if I run HTOP here, you can see I have eight cores, right? And 32 gigabytes of RAM. So it's a lot more powerful. So I could run like much larger data analysis. So I'm just gonna show you the instructions on how to do that here. You don't have to do it. And maybe you might not even need it for your projects, but if you do, uh, the video will be online and you can watch it later. Uh, and, and the reason that I think it's really important is because that's what I use because my laptop's really slow and like I want to run analysis faster. And since it's almost free, like $2 a term is like almost free. And like there are tons of good resources that you can use uh, servers for. So um, I'm also gonna show you guys how to do this uh, in Windows as well. Um, and then in the future um, ones, I'm gonna be just using Linux, but, but you should know how to do it from here if ever you wanna use servers. So um, the way to connect to a server is using a thing called SSH, which is a secure shell. So you, you transfer data securely between the server and you. Um, with, with Windows, there's an application called PuTTY, and all of these instructions actually are on uh, uh, Beginner's Guide uh, to, to Using Servers. So it explains how to, wh what it, everything that I'm talking about here, and explains how to SSH uh, and how to use PuTTY as well. So you can follow the instructions on here later, but I'll just show it to you guys now. Um, and then this is the one for Python, which we'll go over as well. So PuTTY is, is a great application. It allows, you to, uh, it allows you to SSH in, and I'll show you what that means. So uh, I set up a, a virtual server actually just for this course. So um, it has an IP address, and for this is the one that um, like the company that I'm using uh, gave me, but for, for the computer science club, it'll be CS club uh, dot u, uh, sorry, csclub.uwaterloo.ca if you do that. Uh, this is just one that I own uh, that I'm, I guess, paying for. Uh, so it's, uh, this is just my server, um, so you won't have access to it. But normally here, you'd put csclub.uwaterloo.ca or whatever IP address, and it's usually port 22. Uh, so, and then it's gonna ask you for a, it's gonna ask you to confirm that you wanna connect to it. It's gonna ask you for a username. Uh, for this, it'll be your computer science club uh, username and then uh, whatever password you have. 
Okay, so now I'm connected, and this is like a Linux prompt, and it's a little bit scary in the beginning, but you can, um, but you can learn how to use it. Uh, like clear, for example, clears, and I do have a link to like the basic Linux commands. But um, so now that we are connected to uh, the server, we can install Python via command line, uh, which the instructions here, uh, they're they're basically instructions here on how to do it, and you can just read what each line does. But um, you can go back to putty and you can actually just like paste this in. So you can actually hold, I think it's shift insert. Uh, and, it, and it actually will run that line of code, for example. So these are just to install uh, different things. Like this is how you would install Python on Linux. You just run this command. It'll install Python 2.7, Python dev, and Python pip. Um, and I already installed them. So, it's, so it's, normally it'll run for like a couple minutes. Um, and then, so you install these couple of uh, uh, lines of code, which will install different uh, uh, modules. And then the next thing we're gonna use is a thing called pip. It's kind of like conda. So with conda, you can do conda install and then whatever you want. Uh, with, Pyth with Python, if you don't want to use anaconda, uh, you can just use pip. And what pip does is it, it, it keeps a lot of libraries that you're using and you can just install modules just using pip. So um, you can run pip install uh, virtual env, and the notes explain what virtual env is. But um, so it's it's giving me this error because in Linux sometimes you have to run sudo, which is like super user, which which allows you to install things. So I'm going to do sudo pip install, and then it's going to it's going to install it, and it's going to say it was successfully installed. So what a virtual environment allows you to do is kind of like how Anaconda has different. Um, different versions of Python that you can work with. A virtual environment isolates Python from your system. So you have a Python that's installed on your computer, and then you can have a virtual Python where you can install your packages. And the advantage of that is if you make a mistake on the installation or Python stops working, you can just delete the folder that everything's installed in and reinstall it again, and it's, and it's faster. So, so again, all of this is optional, so I'm just gonna go over it quickly, and then I'm gonna show you how to get started in IPython notebook and maybe five or 10 minutes we'll get to linear regression. So, so now that I installed the virtual environment, um, you, we can learn how to make directories. So these are Linux commands to do it. The other thing we can do to connect to this server, because I know a lot of you uh, probably are not used to using the command line, right? Has anyone used command line before? A little bit, a couple of you, okay. So for the ones who haven't, um, there's another application you can install. Uh, one is called FileZilla. And the uh, one that I like is WinSCP. So I would use FileZilla, but I can't install it on the school computer. This is not my computer, this is like the school one. Um, so I'm just gonna use FileZilla. Uh, so you can down, or sorry, I'm gonna use WinSCP, which is also open source and free. Uh, and you can download the portable version. So if you download the portable executable, um, should, yeah, there it is. So I can, uh, so I can take this, uh, and I'm just gonna make a new folder uh, in Windows. Uh, I'm just gonna paste that here. Uh, I can extract it, and then I can run uh, WinSCP. So you just double click WinSCP, and then you can also connect to a server via this. Uh, this is SFTP, which is Secure File transfer protocol. So it's how you can securely transfer files between the server and your computer. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you can send data to the server and receive data on your computer and then you can do analysis. So again, we're gonna use the same uh, host name, uh, 723.net and then my username. And So when I log in, what's going to happen is we're going to have, it's going to ask you again, do you want to connect? And you can say yes. You're going to have your home computer directories on the left-hand side, and you're going to have the server directories on the right-hand side. And this is a brand new server, so there's, there's no files here. So if I go back to here uh, and I do ls, that's how you display what's, what's in the directory. There's nothing right now, so why don't we make a folder? The way to do that is mkdir, uh, and I'm going to call it vm, virtual environment. Um, and if I do ls, it'll show up as a folder in blue. Um, and if I uh, refresh here, it'll show up here. 
So it's just like Windows, kind of like you can make folders and add files and kind of stuff like that. It's a little bit scary in the beginning because you're just dealing in a terminal, but uh, after a while it becomes uh, pretty useful. But you can also do everything in here. You can create a new folder in here. So I could, uh, I could just go to the VM, delete it. Are you sure you want to delete it? And I can make it myself just using WinSCP. So make a directory, let's call it VM. Uh, and we can go inside here. So now we're just gonna, I'm just gonna show you how to install one or two modules. Um, so, so, so I just, uh, I just um, created this, this folder. I can change directory into it, or I can do, or I can use the push command. It's, it's pretty similar. And then I'm gonna create a virtual environment. I'm gonna call the virtual environment data scientist. So our data science, uh, or you can call it whatever you want but it's going to install a bunch of things. And, and now we have this new folder called data science. And all the things that we install in Python are gonna be stored in this folder. Uh, and the way to activate the, uh, the um, virtual environment is to run this command, which is uh, source, and then the link to the folder bin slash activate. And when you do it, you'll see that data science is activated on the side. Um, and and I'll show you what it means to be uh, running it. And oh yeah, and to, de and to deactivate, you can just uh, do deactivate, uh, activate, and and the data science will le will leave. Um, so so right now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna source it again. I'm gonna run that source command. So I'm gonna do source, and then you can uh, data science slash bin slash activate, and it's activated. And now I can start installing. Python files. So for example, um, let's just install, uh, so you can run these commands to pip install different, uh, different modules. Um, and, and then you can follow the guide to, to install it and then it'll install each one uh, on its own. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is, since this is kinda long, I'm not gonna go over it in the tutorial, because um, you have to install like each package, like scikit-learn, uh, Jupyter Notebook, each one you would install manually. Uh, and that way you have control over the installation. Uh, and so there's stat models, um, and they're all the libraries that we're going to use. So the instructions are there. I'm just going to connect to a different server uh, using uh, PuTTY once again. Uh, so I'm gonna just uh, run it, and this, this server has everything installed already, just to save time. So, so here we can see that I already have my VM folder. So if I run Python, so if I just try to run uh, uh, Jupyter, if I just try and run Jupyter Notebook, it's going to say uh, Jupyter Notebook is not is not found. Um, but if I if I run that command, source VM data science, if I activate my virtual environment by going to activate. Sorry. So if I run the, the same command, if I do source uh, vm uh, bin, sorry, data science bin, and then activate, it'll run it, and then I can run uh, uh, Jupyter Notebook. So, so why was it working before, but it's not working now? The reason is because I installed Jupyter Notebook in that virtual environment, in that folder itself. So that way, um, if I want to, if I don't want to touch the system level Python, I don't have to. I can install a smaller version of Python and have everything saved uh, in this folder. So to kill something, you can uh, do colon Q and then it'll say, do you want to exit? And you can say yes. And then you can hit control C and, and you can shut down everything. So as I, as I said, all of the Python things are now saved in this folder, VM. So we can also connect to it uh, using a uh, WinSCP um, and we're going to learn how to transfer files uh, very quickly. Oops. 
so it's going to connect and in the same way it's going to it's going to show me all of the folders and I've used this machine before so I have a couple of things I've R installed and I installed a couple of things just to make sure it's working okay so now what we can do is is as I said we can run Jupyter Notebook um, on the server and what's going to happen is it's going to be running right in the background but we can't really connect to the server directly in our web browser just the way it is so it's running on that same port so you know when you go into your computer and you go uh, local host and then you go like 8888 it's not going to connect because it's not running on this computer it's running on the server so what we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to SSH tunnel using putty and the instructions are there and all SSH tunneling is going to do is it's going to map uh, the server's port 8888 to your port and then you can just connect to it through the server and I'll show you what that means uh, if that's a little bit confused and it's also um, in the instructions down here uh, so so when you run it it's gonna give you this screen um, and the reason that it's gonna give you this error is install JavaScript is because the server you're not connecting to it through the server like you're not connecting to the web browser on the server you're, the web browser is on your local computer so we're just gonna port that port number to your computer so you can connect to it on that same port number and the way to do that is through SSH tunneling as I described um, and I'll show you how to do it in putty and in the future I'll show you how to do it using Linux so if we go back to the to the putty screen uh, what you can do is you can right click and do new session and then it'll ask you for the, uh, the server name again uh, you can also uh, you can also um, save the profile, so let's just call it data site, whatever, and then you can save it. And then in the future, you can open it up just by double clicking. So the way to SSH tunnel is you click the SSH button here, and then you click tunnel. And then, so what you wanna do, I usually check my guide because I always forget the order of the source and the destination. But um, what, you want, what you want is on my local computer, you want it to go to 8,000, so the source is where you want it to go. And and then you go localhost and and eighty eight eight and this is the this is the port number on the server. This is the port number locally. If you want, you can make them the same. It doesn't really matter what number you pick here. This as long as it's like a large like number. Uh, this is going to be the exact port that it's running on the server. And the way to see the port number is if you just hit Q uh, and you say yes, it'll tell you um, it'll tell you here. What, so it's localhost 8888 for this one. So I just want to connect to my server at this, and you click add, and it'll go, okay, so we're going, so we're on the server, we're going to localhost 888, and we're going to put that on our machine at port 8000. And now if we click open, we can log in the same way that we did before. Um, and... Uh, So, so we're logged in the same way, uh, and we can see our files. Uh, so we're, we're connected to it via two via two connections. But now, since we did the uh, tunneling, we can go to localhost 8000, and IPython Notebook will appear. And the really cool part about this is that this is running on the server. This isn't running uh, on this computer, because this is just like a school computer that I'm using. It's just a virtual school computer that I'm using, which you're not allowed to install anything on. So I can connect to servers anywhere in the world and connect to really powerful machines. And that's kind of the, the power of it. So I know I spent a bit of time on this, but I think it could be useful if you're dealing with larger sets of data. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to, from in the future, I'm going to run everything on a server. Um, and, and just so you can see kind of how I do things and you can get comfortable. You can do the same things that I'm doing on your local computer as well. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to do the uh, tutorial, but I'm actually going to show you how to download things on GitHub and, and load the files yourself because I think that's an interesting uh, skill. So if you go to the data science guide, um, you can go to the GitHub page down here or you can go to github.com uh, slash data science guide. And this is where all the notes for the course are. This is where the tutorials and everything else are. So I had some data sets that we're using and it's in the, the data sets uh, folder down here. Uh, maybe I can make this larger for you guys to see. Um, yeah, so we can go down to the to the data sets folder. 
Um, actually, it's now it's a little bit hard to work with. Okay, so these are each of the different data sets. And if you want to download a file, like we're going to learn, we're going to like use this CSV in this tutorial. You can actually just click it, um, and it will show you what the file contains sometimes. But you can also download it clicking the raw button. If you click the raw button, it'll just open up here. But what you can actually do is if you go back, you can right click uh, and you can save uh, save link as, and it will save that same CSV file. So let's just call this, uh, um, I'm just gonna save it all in one folder. I'm just gonna save it in my downloads folder and it's gonna save this CSV and it's gonna show down here. And what I can actually do is I can use WinSCP um, and the way that I like to, to organize like my code is I'll make a directory and I'll call it code. And then inside of the code, let's make a, let's make a folder for this course. And then I also like to make a data sets folder. And I put all my data sets in one folder. Uh, but you can, you can set like your environment up however you like. But I'm just gonna save it in the data sets. And transferring um, files to the server is as easy as just dragging and dropping it. It'll say like, do you want to, uh, do you want to upload the file? And you say okay, and, and it shows up. So now if we go to our server, um, and we go to, and we do ls, you can see we made that new code folder. So I'm gonna change directory, cd to code, and I'm gonna ls, which displays. I'm gonna go to data sets, and I'm hitting tab to autocomplete. And if I hit ls, we can now see that I transferred that file. So you can do um, a similar thing just through the command line, so you don't need to uh, to actually uh, download it and then drag it over. Just because like I like doing things in one line, because um, I'm kind of lazy. So if you just go here and you copy that link address, you can use uh, the wget command. Uh, wget, and then you just put the the link to what you want to download, and uh, the server will automatically download it for you, um, and it will uh, and it will show up. So so that's one way to do it. Um, but you can also do it the GUI way, which you might be used to. So if I click refresh here, that second data set's gonna show up. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to, you can also download um, this whole thing uh, by clicking uh, download zip here. Or if you know how to use git, you can git clone it. But you can download the whole zip folder, unzip it, and then transfer files as well. Um, and we could do that, I guess, as well. I don't know how long it'll take. Actually, it was pretty quick. So if we, uh, we can do this, and then I'm just gonna paste this in here, and we can unzip it. Um, and the thing is, the the thing is, I'm like updating this site like as we go along, as the course, and as we get feedback. So you might need to re-download it, or you should use uh, Git, which I'll go into maybe in a later tutorial. Anyways, so I'm just gonna go to the data sets here, and I'm just going to actually we can open it. I just opened it in Excel. Uh, it's going to open up in Open Office or whatever this computer has. And you can see the data set here just looks like a CSV. Um, so you can also do this analysis, some of it in Excel. You can do the graphs, you can do the linear regression, you can do some stuff in Excel. Um, but we're going to use uh, Python to be able to do it. So I'm just going to um, drag kind of all of these data sets into, uh, into the, onto the server. Um, and it might give me an error that something's, that, that same file's already there, which is fine. So just copied over the files and now we have our data sets. Uh, finally, we're going to, we can actually download that IPython notebook file um, that, we, uh, that, that we're gonna use today. So most of the tutorials, uh, as they get done, I, uh, I actually upload them on here. Um, and you can actually download them the same way. So you can save link as, um, and, and, uh, and you can just drag and drop that onto the server as well. So now when we go back to IPython notebook, we, we can see that we have this new code folder. We have our data sets here. I believe you can open the data sets as well in IPython notebook, which is pretty nice. Um, sometimes if your data set's huge, like it's gigabytes, it'll take a long time uh, and it might slow down, but, but you still can. Uh, and, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go back to code, to the tutorial, and I'm gonna open up the a tutorial I prepared for today. So So I actually this is Windows. This is Windows. This is like Windows Classic. This is actually a school computer. So using the same tools that I that I showed you, just installing and downloading Putty, which is free, and using WinSCP, you can get full access to the server. 
and that's why I wanted to show you guys there. So if you rewatch the video, you can watch how I did that using PuTTY and the tools. So this is Windows. This is like Windows. So it's not hard. Um, so to be able to do, to be able to get access to that CS Club server, um, all you have to do is just go to the CS Club office, which is on the uh, third floor in MC, and then just uh, come with, I think, your student card and two dollars, and you can become a, a member for the term. And they can show you how to uh, SSH, and like I learned a lot of things just like hanging out at the club. So that's where I learned how to use command line and everything else. So that's a good resource. Um, so yeah, that's how you can transfer files, and it's pretty easy. Um, so, so now why don't we move on to the tutorial uh, for the um, lecture material that the professor covered. So with, uh, with uh, regression, I'm going to cover it on two tutorials. So on this tutorial, I'm just going to do simple linear regression. I'm going to talk about how to fit a line. I'm going to talk about residuals. I'm going to, use, I'm going to talk about different Python packages you can use to, to do linear regression. And then in the next tutorial, I'm going to do nonlinear and, ro and robust regression. So I'm going to do curve fitting. I'm going to do other methodologies of doing regression. Um, and, and then I'm also going to go into multi-regression, which is where you have multiple features, and, and we're going to fit a plane to those. Uh, and I'll explain that in the next tutorial. So um, again, to repeat, what so what regression is, is numeric prediction. So you have a set of features, and you're going to predict a number based off of those. And the simplest way to do that is linear regression, which is you fit a linear line uh, for between two of the, well, you can do it between more than one, uh, like between multiple features, but for today, we're just gonna deal with X and Y and fit a curve between X and Y. So in our last tutorial, we learned about uh, Ants Combi's data set. And what I'm gonna show you today is we're gonna fit a line on each of those, and it's gonna have the same linear regression line. So I'm just going to uh, restart the kernel. Um, just so, uh, just so we start again. So again, for this one, we're going to use uh, matplotlib to do plotting, numpy pandas, which is dealing with data frames and arrays. I'm also gonna use, uh, I don't think I'm gonna use log in this one, I might use it in the next tutorial. Um, and, and we're gonna use scikit-learn uh, linear model. So if we run this, uh, and I also run matplotlib in line. So to run it again, I hold control and hit enter. And it's running. It's taking a while actually. Oh yeah, there it's done. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is a virtual. Normally, if I run it on the CS Club server, it'll be a lot faster. This virtual machine is not that fast. Um, so now I'm gonna read in that data set. So again, what this line is is if we go back to our directory, we saved our uh, we saved our our um, data in a data sets folder, which is one directory above. So um, in Windows, you can you know how you can go to uh, one directory above. It's the same idea. So I save. So what? So the dot dot is that one directory above. So go one directory above, then go into the datasets folder and open up uh, this file. Um, and it's going to read it. And then I just uh, printed it here so we can view it right in IPython notebook. So here we can see we have uh, two simple features. We have X and we have Y. And now the first thing we're going to do, like no matter what, is always plot your data. So I'm just going to do a simple scatter plot. Um, so I'm just going to do a simple scatter plot, and we can view the data here. So we can see that there there appears to be a linear relationship between the x and the y. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to fit a curve to it. Um, so the nice the nice thing is that we don't need to implement it. So as I mentioned to, to previously, this co this course focuses on using the algorithms to find actual insights. That's kind of what the data mining part is. We're not actually going to implement linear regression, uh, but uh, Professor Golab did go over it in class, I believe, how to how to do it and how it's calculated, right? Um, just just so that you get an understanding. So the idea is that it's going to fit a line, and then it's going to measure a residual or the distance from the point to that line, and then it's going to minimize that, and that's what the algorithm does. And you probably learned how to do that in your statistics class. So one way is to do it the way that you learned uh, in statistics. And I'm just this is, uh, if you don't understand this, it's fine. But the problem with doing it that way is the cost is uh, big, like big O, N, P squared. So what happens is when, you're, um, when your data set becomes larger, uh, it, it runs slower. So another alternative is to use a thing called gradient descent, which numerically solves for that line of best fit instead of doing the matrix inverse. 
because sometimes you have to do the matrix inverse to do it the linear algebra or statistics way. So that's just something I wanted to mention. Uh, the linear, um, the, the documentation for it. So for, for ordinary least squares, if you, if you click that link, uh, you can actually read how it calculates the residuals and, and kind of how it does. And then you can also read on other uh, linear regression methods. And if you read through here, it'll explain uh, the details of it a lot better. Uh, but for now, let's just learn how to fit a line. Um, so uh, in this case, I need to reshape the data for the linear model. Um, and you can read through the code. But basically, the problem is um, it needs to be uh, in, a, in, a, in a matrix with only one column. And these are what these two lines do. Uh, for this reason, I don't really like using the linear model, linear regression. Uh, I actually like using stats, the stats model package, which we'll go into in just a second. So here, what I do is I just uh, get my X and I get my Y from my data frame. So my data frame, again, looks like this. So uh, ANS combi I, and if I do just dot and then the column name, it'll allow me to access that column. So I'm just going to say X, and then I'm just going to reshape it uh, to have an an array that's of length, uh, the length of, of X with only one column. That's all this two lines do. And then it's going to fit a line uh, between X and Y. And I'm just going to call uh, my fit uh, regression I because we're just using the ANS combi, the first uh, data set. And then you can also print the coefficients of the linear regression. So when you fit a line, it's Y equals MX plus B, right? So you can print the coefficients, which are your your uh, M and your B. So so that way, and then I also um, calculate the residual sum of squares, which you learned how to do in class, which is just uh, take your prediction and, and subtract it from the truth and then square it. And then I just take the mean of that. So I did uh, like basically three or four commands in one. I found the predicted, what it's supposed to be. I subtracted it from the actual, I squared it, and then I took the mean of that. And that's what this line does. Um, and then I also, uh, you can also get the variance. So the really interesting part about um, using uh, these packages is that they actually have um, quite a few uh, parameters that you can do. So you can get the fit intercepts um, and you can, uh, and if you read the documentation, you can get like the different parameters. You can see what the, get the fit, get the predict, get a score, which gives you the coefficient of determination. Uh, the R squared, which if you took statistics, uh, you would know what, what that is. You can also uh, set parameters and, and basically you can use a lot of stuff that people already built. You don't need to implement it uh, yourself, which is the great part about uh, scikit-learn and Python. So I'm just going to run this. Uh, and then all I'm going to do then is I'm going to make a plot of my prediction. And then I'm also just going to plot the scatter points and we can see the line that I, that I fit. Uh, so I'll hold control and hit enter. So here we can see um, the coefficients uh, are, are here. My residual sum of squares, my error is 1.25 and my variance is uh, 0 0.67. And we fit a line uh, across and that's in green. And you can see the, the code that I used to create that is I just uh, did X, I plotted X and I plotted the prediction, the linear regression prediction of, of X. And, and that's kind of fitting a line. So uh, what we, what we learned in class is that we actually calculate the residuals based off of the distance from the line to the data point and actually created a visualization here so you can actually view it. Um, the code might be a little bit complicated to, to understand, but basically I draw a line. I fit the line and then I draw a line for each data point. So what we're actually doing is we are uh, taking this squared, this error, and we're squaring it, right? The distance from this point to our actual data point from the line we fit, squaring it, and then taping, taking the mean. And that's the, uh, um, that's the mean sum of squares. So, the, um, so now what I'm gonna do is I have code here which does it for um, every single uh, data set. Actually, no, sorry. So this is the residual. So in class, you learned that you can actually um, calculate the residuals for each one, and then you can get a cumulative distribution of the residuals and what you want is you want that cumulative distribution to be to have a mean at zero and to be normally distributed um, and so what that means is that the error that you're getting will 
be normally distributed so it'll be as close to zero it'll the central tendency will be towards zero but you will get some outliers because you can't uh, fit because uh, if your data is not perfectly linear there will be error so I just ran sorry I'm just gonna run this code and what I'm gonna do is it's going to uh, again plot those residuals this is the actual residual error so this is zero and we can see here we went down four uh, sorry so the predicted is five and the actual here is four so the error is minus one so uh, these are all of the different errors um, so for example at this point the predicted is about about nine and we're at eleven so the error is two and that's kind of each of these residual plots um, and then I did a residual distribution so I just did a histogram of that and and so if we go back to the code what I did here was I calculated the residual error I calculated the mean and the standard deviation uh, and then I did uh, the same plot that we did before with the this time with the errors so I so I just so I put the errors across X and then a histogram is as simple as doing PLT so that's using matplotlib histogram residual error and then here I just used 10 bins and made the color blue uh, I mean forget about alpha alpha just makes it shaded 75% so it's not like a, a solid blue color um, just so it would view better uh, and then I also on the same plot uh, do the uh, do the probability distribution function so the actual residuals are the blue lines and then using the statistics package I got the standard deviation the mean and then just drew uh, just drew the distribution that way through a probability distribution function and here we can see that it's pretty normal I mean it's not perfect but the central tendency is around zero and there are and it's equivalently uh, uh, it's equivalently uh, on either side so if you weren't to have a, a let's say if your data was um, let's say I don't know exponential and you fit a line what you're gonna see is you're gonna start seeing more and more error as you increase so you're gonna have not a normal distribution um, so the other way that we can do it is using the stats model package so if you want to install the stats model package uh, using the server which I already have uh, installed so the first thing I do again is I have to run that one command source VM oh I'm going to uh, so if you want to change to your home directory you can just do CD and then tilde so right now if you do PWD which is print working directory I'm in slash home slash data scientist slash code slash data sets if I do CD tilde it'll take me back and if I do PWD it'll just take me to my home directory kind of like in Windows you know you have a user directory it's the same idea so so here I'm just going to run that same command source uh, uh, tilde and then VM uh, data science and sorry the other thing is you can also just put the tilde uh, in front of a folder and, and get access to it so slash data science slash bin uh, bin so I hit BI and then I hit tab and it auto completes I can also do activates AC and then tab and then hit enter and it runs here so now I can install things using pip so I can do pip install uh, stats models which it should already be installed yeah uh, and it's, it's giving me some error here saying that we can update pip uh, so you can actually do that as well this is this is just upgrading like usually you can read these errors and try and understand what it's saying so I'm just gonna upgrade pip as well and it will install and update so this, that was just a side note okay so now um, now that we have stats models we can import it we're gonna use SM for stats models uh, so we can add a constant because we want it to be y equals mx plus b and then we just fit using ordinary least squares and we use fit so um, I didn't know how to do this originally I actually just uh, Google searched it I actually um, so this this kind of this post from a company called data robot explains how to use the stats model package and I just read how to do it how to fit a line um, and and then went from there uh, which which I have the link to as well the other thing with the normally distributed part I forgot to mention is that I did explain a post that explains the uh, statistics behind why you want it to be normally distributed and if you read through here it'll explain to you what the coefficient of determination is and and the errors and everything else uh, if you want to brush up on your statistics so it's not completely necessary but it gives you the intuition of what's going on which is very important because you don't want to build uh, bad models building bad models is worse than uh, is worse than building no models because you'll make a bad prediction 
Um, so the, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do it using the stats package. So we have, uh, again, we're just gonna save our X data, our Y data, our, our X data, we're gonna add a constant, and then we're going to use ordinary least squares. So what you can actually do is you can um, search up stats models Python, and, and the documentation's all here. Um, so you can actually read up on examples and stuff like that. Um, and it'll explain to you how to do ordinary least squares and, and give you uh, and give you sample code. And that's kind of where uh, that blog took it from and where I took it from. And you can read. So later on, like next class, we'll learn how to do uh, non-linear uh, non regression and fit things that are cyclical or increasing and, and other really, really powerful things you can do with non-linear data. And this is kind of the uh, next week's tutorial. So uh, for now, we're just going to do ordinary least squares and we're going to fit a line. So we're just gonna fit it, and then we're gonna print the summary. So the statistics package is really powerful, and it will give you all of these different things. So it'll tell you what we're using. We're using ordinary least squares. Uh, using least squares, it'll tell you the number of data points. It'll tell you the residuals. Um, it'll tell you the R squared, um, which is your coefficient of determination. Uh, it will also give you a p-value. So I mean, this isn't a statistics course, but you can also use linear regression to uh, determine the uh, predictive causality. So one thing that you're gonna need to know is that causality doesn't, um, sorry, correlation doesn't mean causality. Just because something's increasing with another doesn't mean that they're interrelated. And that's a mistake that people make all the time. So you can get predictive causality, which is you can see if it's statistically significant of the uh, correlation. It doesn't mean that it's causal. It doesn't mean that X causes B, but it does give you, it's, it's on the way to determining that. And the way to determine that is very difficult, but it's actually going back to first principles and determining uh, whether or not, um, whether or not that actually would have an influence. And a great example of that is, for example, stork sightings and baby births, you can say are correlated, but that's actually only true because there are more people uh, present outside, the population is greater, so more people can see stocks, which also means that there are more people, so there are more babies born. It doesn't mean that babies are born by stocks, like stocks as in the bird. So yeah, it's kind of like a joke that uh, that that uh, I've read, and there there are a lot of uh, crazy correlations that that are there that aren't causal. So be very careful when you do linear regression. Just because it fits to a straight line doesn't mean that uh, it's causal. So this will give you quite a few of these statistics. It's, I just want to show you that you can use another package to be able to do it. Uh, and then um, I had links that show you kind of uh, what each of these mean and stuff like that. Um, so the other thing we can do here is we can actually um, fit, uh, so we can actually do it using uh, a different method here. Um, by using the uh, lin space and using the prediction, uh, and and we can also use Seaborn to be able to do it. So um, Seaborn is really powerful. So instead of ha um, you can just do a joint plot, and what will it will actually show you is it will show you uh, the linear regression, and it will show you the distributions for each of the data points, which is pretty powerful. And that's just done in one line of code. Um, and you can see that, uh, uh, I got that straight from the library here. So it's like this sample code that I used. And I just applied it to my data set. So this is, it gives you more insights. So all I'm trying to show here is that there are other packages and other visualizations you can use. Seaborn is very powerful and shows uh, statistics. Um, I have a couple other examples that I have here. This is with horizontal residuals. So in class, you learn how to fit a line using vertical residuals, which is when you use when um, y is uh, basically affected by x, right? Where um, y is affected by x. But if you know that x is dependent on y, instead of flipping the axis, the x and y's, you can actually just do the horizontal residuals and, and fit a line that way. Um, the other method that you can use is instead of just, uh, instead of just doing it from the horizontal or the vertical, you can do the normal, the distance normal to the line. Um, and 
that's what that's what we have here I didn't actually draw the lines because it was a little bit difficult but you can fit it normal to the line uh, and then I have a plot where I plot uh, all three of them so this is the normal that we're used to the perpendicular um, this is the horizontal uh, and this is the vertical so this is the uh, normal least square so the green is the uh, vertical that we learned in class the red is fitting a line horizontal and uh, the blue is uh, horizontal and there's actually a paper that I guess I didn't post here but it's in the notes that explains uh, that explains um, yeah it explains why you'd want when you'd want to use each one the general one is you just use the normal linear and calculate the horizontal residuals but if you know that um, basically that X is dependent on Y you'd use horizontal and sometimes it helps to just plot all three so you can get a sense for uh, what uh, where, where the line should fit so I guess the key takeaways um, for today which we're kind of out of time is know the assumptions so make sure that you plot your data and see that it's linear if not we're going to use the things that we're going to use next tutorial which is nonlinear regression uh, the other thing is don't blindly apply uh, don't blindly apply it so again view your data and try to understand the statistical significance. So I think if you have some time, read through the links that I send, which explains um, what, these, uh, what these metrics are, what these statistical metrics are and what they mean. Some of them are important and I outline the ones that are important here. Um, so I kind of gave a challenge. This is optional if you want to do, but in class we learned how to, how to do the log transform. So you can take the log of a, if, if your data is not linear and it's exponential, um, you can take the log of that data and then fit a line to it. So I, I'm not going to tell you much about this data set. Um, uh, so I, I uploaded a new data set that you can just download. You can download the CSV. Um, I also have that same data set. Uh, I have that same data set in the, on GitHub. Which, actually it's right here. Uh, So if we go to the data sets, uh, it's the same uh, log regression. It's a log regression example. And this is a set of data where I give you the size of the property. So let's just say it's a house or land or whatever. I give you the size of the property. Uh, I think that's supposed to be kilometers squared not, or meters squared. Anyways, it's just a set of X data. And then this is the price of the, of the property. And then I want you to try and fit linear regression, a regression line to that so you can predict it. And play with this data set. I'll give you the solution uh, next week. But I'll give you a hint. Uh, you're going to need to take a log transform of it. Um, maybe we can actually just plot. Maybe we can actually just plot uh, it really quick uh, in IPython notebook. Uh, so new Python notebook. Um, and then the simplest way to do things is just to is just to use other people's source code. So you can use that same use the same libraries here and then we can also whoops uh, we can also uh, we can also just read it so let's just call it let's just call our data set data set and we're gonna and then this was you can actually auto complete here as well so if you hit tab it'll show you all the files in that folder which is pretty cool so let's do non regression and then we can plot data set and it will show me this is like our data again and then we can do a simple scatter plot uh, so we can do uh, plt dot scatter uh, and then we want the x and y uh, in this case it's size of property so um, since these labels are really annoying um, we can do uh, Actually, forget the I forgot the code for this. This is funny. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go to my site. Sorry, I forget the code for this. So yeah, I too don't know. I too don't know um, all the commands, and sometimes I have to look them up. Um, so this is how you yeah. This is how you set the columns. It's data.columns. So I'm just gonna rename the columns here just to make it a lot easier. So I'm gonna do data set dot columns. So I, I want to change this. Let's just call this size, and then let's just call this price. So this is renaming because these are ugly because the data set 
gave it to you that way. So now we can just do this and it changes it to size and price. Um, and then we can just simply do scatter plot. Uh, we can do data and then hit tab and it'll show you what you have. So data set dot, um, we want to uh, do the size as our, as our X and we want to do data set uh, dot price as our Y and it will give me an error saying that they're not the same size. Interesting. I think the data set. So sometimes you get these errors. Uh, so it's not saying that's the same size. So what I can actually do is just print the length. So okay, so if you look, there's 142, 142 values. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, perfect. So, well, because it starts at zero though, so I don't know why it's doing that. But what we can do is we can print the so Python starts at two. We can print the length of each one. There's no. I think we can do count. We need to do numpy dot count. Um, so another way to do it, since I'm having trouble with this, I think the data set might have uh, an issue. Is I can actually just open it up here. And, and just view it in Excel. That's like a simple way to do it. There's a value missing. Yeah, there could be. Uh, yeah, that's really strange because it was, it was working for, for me. Um, but you could, like if worse comes to worse, right? Like, so this, this is like a real time problem and, I, and the tutorial is over. Um, so I do have to go, but you can actually just plot things uh, in Excel here. And you can just do an XY scatter, for example, just to look at your data if you're having problems. So this is what the data set looks like. Um, it's kind of ugly, uh, but um, this is what the data set does look like. So maybe you can fit a line like that fits across here, or you can take a log transform, right? Because it's like an inverse. Uh, and then you can do the log transform and then uh, and then fit a line to it. So, so one way could be to like, you can actually do it in Excel as well, but you can, uh, you can just do like, for example, try different things, but you can do log, uh, take the log of something like this, and then and then uh, fit a line to this and see if, if this is linear. If you just look at it, it kind of appears that it could be linear now, right? And then you can do, and then you can fit linear regression across here. So play with the data. I mean, when you deal with real world data sets, they're not gonna be clean, they're gonna give you errors, but uh, same thing on your project. So learn how to be able to deal with them and stuff. And I'll definitely, uh, after this, um, figure out why I'm getting that error. Um, but, but yeah, so, so hopefully that was insightful. You now know how to do simple linear regression. Uh, I'll post a video of this after, and then, um, you guys can, uh, uh, get started and hopefully try this challenge. It's optional. If you want to try it, it, it'll, it'll give you an interesting insight, uh, hopefully, and I'll present the results next tutorial.